Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number 16. Day number 16. And here's the question for us. It's a simple geometry problem. There is a reason why I'm going through this thing and you will see that reason in a second. Here's a simple geometry problem. We are given a circle and we are told that this line PQ goes to the center of the circle. Because the line PQ goes to the center, we know that it's the diameter. We are not told that, but that's what we infer from it. That's what we gather from it, that P to Q is diameter. This is a right angle triangle because of the symbol here. This is a right angle triangle, PQ, let's call this R. Triangle PQR is a right angle triangle. The question simply is which quantity is bigger? X, this, this distance from P to R, which is X, or Q to R, which is X, which quantity is bigger? This quantity X or 7? What's the very first thing we have to figure out? In order to figure out the X, in order to know this quantity X, we have to know how long this distance is from P to Q. We have to figure out the distance P to Q. What I want you to do now is, as always, pause the video at this point. Solve the problem yourself, and then when you have the answer, you can resume the video. I'm not doing this problem because the problem is very complicated. I'm doing it for a different reason, uh, which when we continue the video, you will see. So I'll give you a chance to pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then come back. There you go. The very first thing we have to do now is figure out the distance P to Q. We know, we are told that the area of the circle is 25 pi. Let's put it here. Area of the circle is... Area of the circle is 25 pi. How does one measure the area of the circle? Which is, which is where things get prickly. I've, I've run into many a times in uh, students, I've run into students many a times where they, they know the two formulas, they know that there exist two formulas, the 2 pi r and pi r squared. But not obviously not everybody, but some students cannot, cannot uh, figure out which one applies when. They mess, they mess them up. They, 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 they have no way of knowing which formula applies in which situation. Which one is the area, which one is the circumference, they cannot tell. And the reason they cannot tell is because they try to memorize that this is for the circumference, this is for the area. They memorize it. They have no intuitive understanding. They have no, for the lack of a better word, no intellectual understanding as to which formula applies in what situation. And if you are one of those people who have simply memorized that 2 pi r is the circumference and pi r square is, this, is, is the area without any understanding at all as to why, then this video is for you. Which formula applies in which situation has to do with understanding what pi is. What is pi? This is the question. I'm going to put a box around it to indicate, to make the point that I'm making a big fuss about it. What is pi? When I ask that question, what is pi to students, the vast majority of the time they proudly and without hesitation inform me, when I ask them what is pi, they would proudly inform me it is 3.14. Or sometimes they would, they would be clever, clever enough to tell me that it is approximately 3.14. But that was not my question. When I ask you what is pi, that question is not the same as how much does pi equal to. What is pi and what pi equals to are two separate questions. What is pi, anybody can memorize it. Anybody can memorize it. Uh, you can uh, you can parrot you can uh, you can make a parrot memorize pi equals three point one four. But what is pi? Do you have any understanding of it? What does pi represent? What is it? Do you have the answer? What is pi? A pi is. I need the room, so you can erase a lot of stuff here. This is the question. What is pi? A pi. Not a pi, rather. It's not a pi. This quantity pi. Let's put it way up here. You can always, you can re always uh, rewrite all of this thing. Pi is the ratio of two quantities. 
pi represents the ratio of two quantities. It's the ratio of distance around the circle to the distance across the circle. This ratio is known as pi. I know when I when I draw when I write pi, I, I just write in a sloppy way. It's supposed to be like this, but I'm, as I told you, I'm sloppy. That's my pi. So that's my actual. This is the pi, which is same as that. That's what that is. It's the ratio of this. This is this is a this is a natural phenomenon. This is how nature. This is how nature created circle. There are there are many 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 what are known as natural constant. These are constant that happens in nature and that's just the way it is. Gravity is three point, uh, sorry, nine point eight some meter per square second. That's how, that's how, gra that's how much gravity is. That, that's the gravitational pull that is towards Earth. And of course, for a different planet, it will be different. There are, there, and similarly, there, there's, a, there's a speed of light, which is a constant. There are many constants in nature. These are just natural phenomena that, that occur, that happen. And there is no explanation for it. That is how the world was created. This is how the nature is. And one of the constants of the nature is, is the fact that if you were to draw a perfect circle, then distance around that circle, distance around that circle, versus distance across that circle, these two these two quantities, the ratio of these two quantities is always, always, always constant. It never changes. It does not matter how large the circle is. It does not matter how small the circle is. As long as it is a perfect circle, that ratio will always be constant. And that constant ratio is called, is, is not, it's not called that, but rather it is designated by the Greek letter pi, pi for p. This pi here. What do we call the distance around the circle? Let's continue here. I'm going, to, I'm going to forget about all of this for the time being. Let's continue here. What do we call distance around the circle? Well, distance around the circle, there's a word for it, there is a terminology for it in, in, in mathematics. We call it circumference. The distance around the circle is called circumference. And I cannot spell circumference, can I? Circumference. And the usual letter that we use to designate this quantity, to denote this quantity, is C, circumference. And what we call distance across the circle? Distance across the circle is what we call diameter, represented usually with the letter D. And that ratio is called pi. One more time, pi equals circumference versus diameter. Let's continue here in the same way so that my teachers do not get upset at me. It has to line up. There we go. Let's cross multiply both sides. Let's cross multiply both sides. Not cross multiply either. Let's get rid of this denominator from, from this, from the side. The only way we can get rid, of, get rid of the denominator is to multiply both sides by d. This cancels out, and therefore now c equals pi times d. c equals pi times d. Well, what is d? Your d is diameter. d is simply twice the radius. This distance from here to here, p, q, p to q, we call it diameter. The distance that goes from the center of the circle to the other end, we call it radius. These are just terms that we have, that we have agreed upon, and the term that is used to designate the distance from the center of the circle to the outermost edge. That's 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 how we define radius. If somebody asks you what is the radius, it is the distance from the center of the circle to the outermost edge. That distance is called the radius, which is two of those radii, two radii. The plural of radius. is the plural, plural of radius is radii, not radiuses. 
So two of those radii make the diameter. So I can replace this diameter with 2 times r. And then the convention in the mathematics is that, and if you do not know the word convention, if you do not know the word convention, just give me one second here, I will be back in 10 seconds. If you are interested in learning the meaning of the word convention properly, you can go to day 46. Day number 46, just type in Kishmani Prep dash vocab dash day 46 and you will learn the word convention. Convention has two meaning. One meaning of the word convention is a gathering or a meeting. Another meaning of the word convention is tradition. The convention, the tradition is in the mathematics that if you have a quantity, you are to write the constant first, the constant, the constant, or rather the numerical value first, the, the numeral first, which is 2. So 2 goes first. This is just a convention, this is just a tradition. Then goes the constant. First any number, then the constant, and then the unknown, the variable. The radius is the variable because it varies with the size of the circle, obviously. And what do we have? What do we have? Voila! Hey, voila! Circumference equals 2 pi r. There is no reason why you should have to memorize the formula. I need both my hands to finish my sentence. You see, I'm going to put the cap back so I can talk, I can finish my sentence. There is no reason for you to have to memorize the formula for circumference if you understand what pi is. The pi is simply the ratio of the distance around the circle to the distance across the circle. And if you understand that concept, embedded in this definition, embedded in this definition, buried inside the definition, is the formula for the circumference. As you can see, there's the derivation. One more time, pi equals distance around the circle to distance across the circle. And of course, the distance around the circle is what we call circumference, which is designated with letter C. The distance across the circle is what we call diameter, which we use usually designate with letter D. So pi equals C over D. If you multiply both sides by D, we get rid of this D from here, and C equals pi times D. C equals pi times D. You see again, I put the pi first and not the D, because pi is the constant, that goes first. Constant goes first and then the variable. And then of course we can replace the diameter with 2 times R. And here we will write the 2 first, then the constant, and then the unknown. And there is a circumference, 2 pi r. Now, if you know that circumference is 2 pi r, if you understand that circumference is 2 pi r, then the area, then the area must be pi r squared. Pi r squared. How else do you, how else can you, uh, can you keep straight that the area must be the one that the square on it? I'll explain that in one second, okay? I need the room. So what should I erase here? Let me explain you intuitively, and now let me give you a... Oh, I am running out of room here. I don't know how, how far you can go down to, stir, to read it. The word is, is pronounced mnemonic. M is silent. The letter M is silent. M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C, mnemonic. Let's see if we actually covered it or not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we covered it or not, because if we did not, then I will cover it one of these times, one of these days, rather, in the future. We have not done mnemonic. Interesting. I have to make a note of it. What is a mnemonic device? A mnemonic device is a memory device. A mnemonic device is something that you make up to remember something. Uh, whatever it is, a uh, mnemonic device that you make up. Sometimes people make a, have a mnemonic device for the order of operation and they will they will say uh, PEMDAS parentheses exponents multiplication division addition and subtraction that's the order of operation in the, in the, when you have a whole bunch of uh, operations which one do you first first you do parentheses then you do the exponents then you do the multiplication then you do the division then the addition then the subtraction this 
This is called a mnemonic because it helps you remember something. This is a mnemonic device. The mnemonic that you want to use, the mnemonic that you can use to remind yourself that the area must be the one with the square in it, which you don't need anymore because if you understand the value of pi, you will immediately see that pi is from the value of pi is what we get the area, uh, the circumference of the circle. But in addition to that, another giveaway, another cue to you that this is the this is the formula of pi r square is the area, is to understand this part. Area, area, anything, anything in the world, area of anything, is a two-dimensional concept. For example, I have a room. I have a room which is 10 meter by 5 meter, and I want to buy carpet for it. So I go to the carpet store and I tell the guy. I need to carpet this living room 10 meter by 5 meter. I, I tell the guy I want to I want to carpet this room and he's going to ask me how much carpet do you need? Well what do I tell him? I will tell him that I need how do you find the area of the rectangle? Length times width. 10 times 5 is 50 and then meter times meter. You see meter times meter giving me 50 square meter. 50 square meter. Why is it squared? Because we're talking about area. It is two-dimensional. Area would have to be two-dimensional. Area of the circle is a two-dimensional concept, which means it has to be a quantity squared. Something in this formula, some something in this formula would have to be squared. Obviously, it's not going to be pi because pi has no unit. It's a constant. It is the radius, which is measured in meter or yards or inches, whatever it is, whatever the unit that you're using to measure the radius that unit would have to be squared. So if the radius is 5 inches, it's inches squared, meters squared, yard squared. You get the idea. The squared has to be in the formula of the area. If it doesn't have a squared, it cannot be area. Area of anything will involve some unit being a squared. Similarly, when you talk about a cube, three-dimensional concept, it will have some unit that is being cubed, which I will discuss next time in the future. But there you go. This is your area. This is your circumference. I do not know why we took so so long, but I hope you found it helpful. And now I'm going to finish the uh, problem, okay? We, we can erase this thing. I'm going to leave all of this alone. Let's finish up the problem. The problem is very simple, very straightforward. I'll put it here. Area equals pi r squared. So, let me put... We're going to do it here. We are told that the area equals 25 pi. So 25 pi must equal pi r squared, pi r squared. We can divide both sides by pi, and if you divide both sides by pi, the pi will drop out. And r squared equals 25, this means r equals 5. If r equals 5, from here to here is 5, and from here to here is another 5. So we have a, we have a triangle, a right angle triangle, in which the hypotenuse, because this is facing the right angle, P to Q is the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is 10, and this is X, and this is X. So now we have to solve for X. Here's, here's, our, here's our triangle. This is 10, this is the right angle, this is X, and this is X. This from here to here is your P to Q. There we go. Which is very simple. 10 squared equals X squared plus X squared, which means 2X squared equals 100 which means x squared equals 50 and x will equal the square root of 50. A square root of 50 is obviously more than 7. Why is it more than 7? Because square root of 49, the square root of 49 is 7, therefore square root of 50 would have to be more than 7. And the two quantities that was given to us uh, in the problem was, the two quantities that were given to us were column A, column B, in column A we had root 50 and in column B we had 7 and obviously as you can see root 50 obviously is more than 7. Root 50 is more than 7, the answer is C. Answer, answer is A, voila. Answer is C, uh, answer is A rather. Quantity in column A is bigger. That's it. That's all. This part was not the reason why I did this video. This was not the reason. This is very simple, very straightforward. I know that. Almost Everybody can do this thing, but very few people that I've run into 
can articulate what pi is when they are asked. And, very, and even fewer people realize that you don't have to memorize the so-called formula of the circumference. There is nothing to memorize. You just have to understand where it comes from. The, the circumference, the formula of the circumference, is simply a, a, an incognito form of the definition of pi. This is, this is the definition of pi. If you were to divide both sides by 2r, if I were to divide both sides by 2r, c over 2r, 2r is diameter. C over diameter, there you go, C over diameter is your pi, that's what that is. There is nothing to memorize, just understand it. Understand that pi is the ratio of, pi is the ratio, let's put it here, pi is a ratio. Pi is a ratio, that's it. A ratio of what? A ratio of the distance around the circle to distance across the circle, and that's all you have to understand. The rest is downhill. From there, you would understand the formula for the circumference will automatically emerge. All right. I hope it was interest. I, I I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it uh, interesting in in the sense that now at least you will understand what it is. And if somebody asks you, you can actually articulate it what it is. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, for GRE, GMAT, SAT, or TOEFL, or even just simple math math, math tutor, if you're looking for, uh, you can go to any of these website addresses and get hold of me, or you can simply go to kashwaniprep.com and you can send me an email from there. Alright? Thank you.